everyone. This is Eric L. Dunavant, the Mindset Disruption Strategist. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Redefining Success, the Kingdom Builder Spotlight. Joining me today is Kelly Roach, host of The Kelly Roach Show. She is a business growth strategist. She's one on the Inc. 5000. I think she kept just telling me all these things that she's done. And I'm like, man, how'd you end up on this show? Because I'm just excited and honored to have you here. So Kelly, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Hey, yeah, Kelly, before we kind of, because I know we're going to spend time talking about your show and your business and the other things that you do for business owners. But before we do that, tell my audience a little bit about you outside of business. Outside of business. Well, first and foremost, wife and mom. So I've been with my husband for 17 years. I have a nine-year-old daughter, Madison, who is the center of our universe and the love of our lives. And dog mom to Marley, Cavapoo, <laughs> two years old. Um, and, you know, I love the ocean and followed our dream a couple years ago of moving across the country and moving to the beach here in Southern Florida so we can see the crystal clear water every single day. Yeah. And um, just a person of faith, you know, a person that uh, loves to test boundaries and try new things and encourage other people to get outside their comfort zone to make the absolute most of this life that we have and this short time that we're here. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Kelly, what are you most excited about right now? What's given you the most energy, the most passion? Yeah, you know what? I love creating. I love being of service and it is really exciting to see uh, the podcast continuing to grow. I'm, you know, I've been creating for seven years now, I think on the Kelly Roach show, we're at like almost episode a thousand at this point. And the show has really kind of begun to take a life of its own. And I I'm just excited to really as someone that has, I I've built an eight figure business. I have five other companies. Um, but my podcast is free and it's is accessible to everyone, yeah. right? And so this year I'm really doubling down on my commitment to that free content and the ability for anyone in the world to learn mm -hmm. and grow with me and through the show. And so I'm just excited about continuing that journey and hopefully touching more people and inviting more people to begin their journey um, of building a 1% life and achieving the goals that matter the most to them. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Are you... I don't imagine this is most people. I have yet to meet an overnight success. So, <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> you know, how much you know, time do we have? Typically, a ten to fifteen year or twenty year overnight journey. Um, yes. As you kind of reflect back on your journey, as people are kind of hearing this and going, "Man, it just sounds like she's got it all together." I'd love to know a little bit more, kind of about how'd you get here and what are you know the show is redefining success. What are some of the lessons you've kind of learned? along the way and maybe some of the mistakes that you made. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So definitely not an overnight success. You know, for me, I grew up in a family that struggled a lot with money and it was, we had, you know, five kids in my family and, you know, my parents are good and loving people and really generous people. And they gave us an overabundance of love, but there was also a lot of stress and a lot of strain in our house every month, trying to figure out how we were going to pay the bills. Right. Mm. And, you know, when I look at the term redefining success, uh, I think when when we look at uh, a lot of people that are in pursuit of achieving greatness, they think that they have to compromise, you know, on their family or on their faith or on their health and wellness mm -hmm. in order to grow income and to build success. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people also, when they think about success, they have this guilt complex uh, that making lots of money is in conflict with doing good in the world. And so for me, my whole life has been this mission of kind of changing that paradigm for myself and then helping other people to say, hey, wait a minute, you know, look what she's doing. Like, I can do that too, right? Like, I, I think anyone that's in the role of being a teacher in any way, shape or form, you know, our job is to kind of plow through the cornfields and make a pathway that other people can more easily go down. Mm -hmm. And so I think for me, coming from a, a place of scarcity around money and creating a new set of beliefs and then having to back those beliefs up by finding a set of skills and then committing to a lifetime of learning about business and about leadership and about building teams. And, you know, I started my business. It was a little side hustle. I was working in a corporate job 
I was managing 17 locations and a team of 100 people. And I was working like 50, 60 hours a week and mm-hmm. building my little business on the side. But I sacrificed greatly uh, because I did not want to compromise the financial position that I had worked so long and so hard to break out of that generational struggle in my family. Mm-hmm. And it was the best thing I ever did because it gave me the opportunity to really invest in the business and you know make good sound decisions. and. You know, I, I think when we look at the the challenges and the struggles that we all have, you know, I remember being curled up on a in a ball. I teach people how to launch. I've turned, taught ninety thousand people the live launch method. I came from having failed launch after failed launch after failed launch, and the only reason that I ever started teaching launching was I went through so much struggle and pain and expense doing it the wrong way that when I finally figured it out, I was like, man. I got to tell as many people as possible about this. I got to help other people. I know I can't be the only one that's losing money launching, right? right so right. in every in every uh, challenge that we face, it, that that is where change is born. And it's mm-hmm. out of that challenge that we change. And because of that change, we step into the next version of ourselves, which is then what enables us to then pass that baton back and send the elevator back down to help other people. Mm-hmm. You know, one of my favorite terms I like to use is the the most important thing we can do in our life is pursue the right ROI. And what I mean is return on intention. Mm -hmm. Um, Return on intention is the pursuit of faith and family and everything before finance. Um, What it sounds like that's something you agree with and you're even kind of teaching and talking about yourself. But so so what opened up your eyes to that? Because that's not the way that the world talks. I mean, that's not the state. I mean, you don't get that lesson from a lot of the books that are out there. You don't get that lesson from a lot of the conversations you have in business school or other places like yeah. that. So what kind of unlocked that level of thinking for you? Yeah. Yeah. And and I just want to say like, absolutely faith and family first, like above all else. And, you know, success without those two things is not success at all. And that's why so many people build these on paper, wildly successful businesses that are doing a lot of revenue or making a lot of money, which by the way, I love making a lot of money and doing a lot of revenue. So there's nothing wrong with that. But the reason why they then look around and they're in depression or they're in despair is that they forgot that in in creating that success, if you don't have meaningful relationships and people to share that success with, or if you're not able to go on that journey with the person that you love, or if you lose the relationship with your creator or with your children in yeah. the pursuit of building that business, the entire reason why you wanted to create that success to have joy and happiness and fulfillment in your life is lost, right? Mm-hmm. And for me, you know, when I was in my corporate career, because I had come from financial scarcity, I think in my 20s, I kind of put finance first before everything else. And so I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't working out the way that I should. I wasn't making time for the things that mattered to me. And it was it was when Billy and I were starting to get to the point where we were starting to talk about our family and, and our life together and what do we want that to look like that I really realized like, holy crap, if I don't make a blueprint for my life and actually start designing this life with these priorities at the forefront, this isn't gonna go well, mm. right? And so, you know, we started designing that blueprint for our lives. Like we made the decision to have Billy home full time from the moment that Madison was born so that the last nine years, he's been 100% focused on her growth and development and support. I think that people put more time and energy into picking what they're gonna do for dinner or what their one time a year vacation is gonna be than they do creating a blueprint for happiness in their life. Mm -hmm. And I think that anyone that you ask to sit down and really get clear on what does happiness look like in your life? Well, that's going to include having a spiritual connection, even though some people can't verbalize that that's what it is. They, mm-hmm. they, they want to feel a connection to something bigger than themselves. They want to feel a sense of security, that they're being guided, that there's purpose for their life, that there's something bigger than them. Yeah. And they also want to share success with people that they love. Yeah. And so if those two things are true for anyone listening today, creating a blueprint for your life with family and faith at, faith at the forefront, and then allowing everything that you do in your business and your career to feed into that is what's going to help you to bring that all together in a beautiful masterpiece versus creating this constant conflict. So what, what does that look like for you? I mean, how, so how practically, 
How does living out your faith as you also do your business? So kind of share that with my audience for you. How does that actually come to play for you? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. So for me, and I don't, I consider myself to be more of a spiritual person than religious person. I do go to church. I'm a Christian. Um, but, you know, for me, the journey of faith, and I will say, I, I think I was a very strong person of faith in my young years. Then I veered off a little bit. And it wasn't until I had a, a really awful awful situation happen in the business, which I'll talk about in just a second, that mm -hmm. I really recognized the power of faith and, and mm -hmm. really understood how much this needed to be the centerpiece of my life. But you said, how does that look practically for me? Yeah. First thing I do every Monday morning is a prayer circle with other women of faith. Mm -hmm. When I'm getting ready in the morning before I begin my work day, I sit on YouTube, I pick up a different prayer meditation, and I sit and I listen and I pray and I meditate and I try to really connect with what is my role as a vessel for good mm -hmm. in the work that I'm doing? Mm -hmm. um, you know, on the weekend, obviously, either, you know, getting to church or or even like last weekend, I sat down with my daughter and I just spent an hour with the children's Bible, mm -hmm. reading through the stories and then talking about what does this mean? And, you know, that's the practical application. But in reality, like, what does that mean as a business leader? I think what that means is, number one, that you make decisions through the context of your moral and ethical compass. That's one. But the second and more important part is when you are feeling in despair and you are going through the challenges that are inevitably a part of every business owner's journey, not just once, but over and over and over and over again, that you can always find within you the deeper calling of why you are here and why you need to keep going and why these challenges are being put before you so that you can teach, so that you can serve, so that you can become more. And I think that's the more important piece of it because uh, practically speaking, I think a lot of business owners that experience either severe burnout or anxiety or depression, many times it's when we are disconnected mm. from our faith and we, we feel such disconnect that we can't see to the other side. We can't feel that the storm is going to run out of rain, that yeah. we are going to be carried through, that we're going to be safe, we are going to be protected. Um, and, and so, you know, we've all had those experiences, you know, and I think like for a lot of people, 2022 was that experience, let's be honest. Right. Uh, for a lot of business owners, 2022 was their most challenging year after having a wildly successful year in 2020 and 2021. And a lot of people are shutting their businesses down. A lot of people are leaving the entrepreneurial space because of it. Sure. And I think if you can recognize that there's there's something deeper, there's something bigger than you, there's a purpose, right, that you're being called to and, mm -hmm. and start aligning your life and your decisions and your mindset with that, I think it will help carry you through those things. So tell us, will you tell us the story? Will you share the story of what brought you to yeah. that? Yeah, so I mean, like, like I said, I, I feel like I had, I had been a person of faith my entire life to varying degrees. But, you know, I think as I was building my business, you know, we went from being a six figure business to a seven figure business to an eight figure business. We're just soaring high and having these unbelievable levels of success. And, you know, it was just an amazing journey. And, you know, out of nowhere, I got sued uh, by Entrepreneur Magazine for using the word entrepreneur. So I had spent um since 2012 building my brand called the unstoppable entrepreneur so my whole brand was built around this word unstoppable and it was unstoppable entrepreneur to say like this is who we serve this is what we do yeah. now this trademark and this whole thing never would have gotten through the way that it did now and there no one can at this point can trademark a general word the way that they did, but it is what it is. So anyway, they came after me extremely aggressively. They started subpoenaing my clients. They basically told my lawyer, like we're basically, and for all intents and purposes, and I'm paraphrasing, but you know, we're gonna take you out of business. Like we're we're gonna crush you. Um, you're you're gonna stop, you're gonna rebrand. Now, for me, it wasn't just an easy decision to rebrand because I create about 40 pieces of content a week. Okay. And so I had um, since from 2012 to I don't know when, you know, so many years of so much branded content. I mean, I literally had to hire a full time person to change thousands of mm. links. I and and I 
you know, so I don't talk about it a lot publicly, but it brought me to my knees. I mean, I, I got to the point where it was either I was going to lose absolutely everything, like the business was going to be done, they were going to take me out, um, or I was going to go through this massive rebranding um, that we lost so much time and traction and energy and clients. We And that was their whole goal. They They wanted to get all the clients to leave because they wanted to scare them enough that, hmm. right? Yeah. So- and this has been going on, like you can look it up like this. They've been bullying small businesses for I don't know how long. And and this is I'm not a unique case at all. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So so anyway, it, it brought me to my knees and, you know, I, it really had me to the point where every day I was literally praying to God saying, please, God, don't let me have a heart attack and die mm -hmm. um, because I was trying to carry my team hundreds of clients, probably close to, a, a, I don't know what the exact number is, maybe close to a thousand clients at this point. Um, we work in a very high touch capacity. We do high level coaching and consulting. So this is not like we're selling courses where we don't talk. I mean, this is high, high intensity work that requires a lot of mental aptitude from mm -hmm. me as the CEO and the business owner, big team of 50 people. Um, so this is a lot, right? And, and so, I was literally at my breaking point and I was just, you know, praying just for deliverance to come through this and to navigate this and, you know, got through it. And, and, you know, there's so much more to the story and I don't, I, I like to be careful even what I'm, I don't talk about this a lot publicly, but, you know, it's just one of those things where I came face to face with losing everything and I almost did. Mm -hmm. And I realized that even if I did lose everything, that I was put here for a purpose yeah. and I would rebuild. And in a lot of ways I did, I had to rebuild. My entire brand was destroyed. I had to pick a new name. I had to rebrand all of my content. I lost all the market strength that I have for this name that I had spent hundreds of thousands of dollars doing advertising and building my brand around. Um, they started throwing other legal suits at me afterwards because I didn't back down right away. So they were hitting me from every direction. Um, but at the end of the day, it was just, it was just a question of, do I believe that I'm here for something bigger than me? Yeah. And do I believe that regardless of however this situation turns out, even if I lose it all, um, and have to start over that I'm going to take everything that I learned and build mm -hmm. back better and become even more and, and serve at an even higher level. And that's when I just realized that like you, there's things that you can control in life and there's things that you can't control, right? We yeah. didn't do anything wrong, you know, to get in this situation. We didn't hurt anyone. We didn't, you know, do mm -hmm. anything to deserve what happened to us. But because of that, the rebrand actually became the catalyst for the repositioning of the entire company. And now I have four other brands that are all growing and thriving. And some of them are building even with leadership without me. And so looking back, just as in every situation, you can only see the dots looking backward. You can't see them looking forward as Steve Jobs so brilliantly said. And, you know, it, it's just one of those things where you, you can either have fear, or you can have faith. Mm -hmm. But you can't, you know, you, you have to decide and, and if it's going to be faith, it's like you have to trust that like you can't control it, but you believe that deliverance will be there for you and you're going to show up and you're going to do your best and you're going to be your best and you're not going to give up and you're going to keep, you know, fighting the good fight and doing everything you can. And then ultimately you'll be carried to the other side, which always holds something greater for us because God created abundance. He wants us to live in a space of abundance. Yep. And, you know, that's, that's just a little bit of the story, but there's, mm. there's more to it, but that no, goes a little bit though, because, um, you know, as business owners, it's so up, it's so easy to get caught up in the business we have or the, the things or the stuff. Um, there's a little band out of California that some people know from a long time ago, but they're still making music called Switchfoot. And they wrote a song a number of years ago when the California fires were coming through um, called If the House Burns Down Tonight. And I just, I mentioned this because there's a line in there that says, yeah. you possess your possessions or they possess you. Yeah. And that's what you just said. Like you had to come face yeah. to face with the fact of either I have my stuff or my stuff has me. 
hundred percent, hundred percent. And for me, I'm looking around and I'm like, I have my husband, I have my daughter, I have everything that means everything to me. Everything else is something that I can recreate, I can rebuild, it can come, it can go. But you're right. I mean, that's exactly it. And and it was such a great, empowering like phoenix moment for me because you know we we pivoted we handled it we're growing we're fine it it took a lot of healing and recovering for me to even get back to like my potential as a leader but it it, it when you when you face that and you choose to have faith mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it strengthens you and gives you an edge that nothing in the physical realm can reproduce yeah. Right. Absolutely. And I, I think we all need to have that moment. And I think we all have the moment of challenge. Like I'm sure everyone listening to this episode has a story just like mine, except it's dressed up in different clothes. Right. We all have that story. Sure. But the question is, is when we have that story and when we go through that experience, how do we come out on the other side? Mm. Right. That's the question. And for me, I made the decision like I was I was roughed up coming out of that, but I made the decision like I'm going to build back and I'm going to become a better version of myself and I'm going to elevate this brand and I'm going to make it 100x what it ever was and I'm going to use this as a catalyst. Mm-hmm. And it didn't mean that I wasn't affected. I absolutely was affected. Um and it cost me couple million dollars ultimately sure, and sure. clients that I lost and legal fees and yeah. you know time and money and team and you know all of those things it set me back a lot but in the end it didn't set me back at all right because of you know the stronger version of myself that I am now and we all have that inside of ourselves right it's just making that decision of leaning into the faith or leaning into the fear yeah yeah what do you, so you coach a you coach a lot of business owners you work with a lot of people where is the where's the mindset mindset shift happen when or where do you take people because this is the response I get a whole lot so I love I would love to hear yours is like so I understand Eric you're you're Kelly you're saying I need to put my faith I need to put my family but you don't understand I'm different my business is going on and I don't have time for that yeah yeah mm-hmm. I mean no one has time to to basically have their business shut down and lose millions of dollars, right? I mean, none of us have time for it, right? Um, it's like, if if you had a gun to your head and you had to go produce 10 grand overnight, I guarantee you'd do it, Yeah. right? And, and the thing is, is with champions, you know, you can have stories and excuses or you can make millions of dollars and that's it. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. So, you know, it's like, if your life depended on it, what would you do? Mm -hmm. And it's finding that inside of yourself and doing that every day, not when you're backed into a corner, not when you're like, oh my God, the mortgage is due and I haven't closed a client in six weeks and I'm screwed, right? right? Right. It's showing up like that every single day, Mm -hmm. every single day. And if you show up like that every single day, guess what? You're never going to be in that situation again for the rest of your life, which is where that fire came from for me. Mm. I sat and listened to my parents argue. I sat and listened to my mom cry. I saw the depression and the anxiety and the trauma that came from that situation of being financially compromised. And I said, never again. Mm, yeah. never again. And so I set out on a journey to learn the skills, sales, marketing, leadership, business. How do you become a person that's never going to be in that position? It's not by complaining. It's not by being stressed out. It's not by saying my situation is hard or different. It's by becoming better. Mm-hmm. It's by learning what you need to master in order to be a person that's never put in that position again. And we all have the opportunity to do that. Heck, between podcasts and YouTube, there's enough free education for every single one of us to learn anything that we want to learn to become anything that we want to be, mm-hmm. right? So true. So true. Yeah. Kelly, we're going to run out of time before we know it. So before we do, I do want to ask, is there anything I didn't ask you about that you wanted to make sure you got a chance to share with the audience? Well, I, I would say, you know, I've heard a lot of frustration or fear, I think, around the economy and around how we're going to grow in 2023. And I think there's an important message, and we didn't get to talk about this today, but 
um, you know, I was leading teams and businesses on the front lines, um, you know, in 2008 and 2009 in the crash. And the one thing that I would say to everyone is when everyone else is leaning out, they're cutting their advertising, they're cutting their teams, they're, they're cutting on the things that they do to serve their clients and customers. Leaning in mm. is the way to go in a year like this, especially because there's going to be so much market share up for grabs because so many people are shutting it down. They're cutting costs, they're pulling back. So I just think it's important like from veteran people like you and I for everyone Mm -hmm. to hear the message of like lean in don't lean out and there is people people are buying every second of every day it's how you show up and it's how you participate in the opportunity Mm -hmm. that's so good Kelly if people want to get in touch with you follow the Kelly Roach show all what's what are the ways to go do all of those content because I was on your YouTube page today I mean you're putting out so much content Thank you. Yeah, I would say the Kelly Road Show is number one. I mean, that is my pride and joy. And I, I truly do that. That's my legacy body of work. Uh, and, you know, I really bring my heart to that. And, and I think you could grow your business for free just listening to that show. So the Kelly Road Show is number one. And then number two, either connect with me on my personal page on Facebook or Kelly Roach Official on Instagram and just drop me a line. Say hello. I'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Awesome. You, I told you this was coming. So my last question is always the same. I cannot wait to hear your answer. But in three generations, what do you hope your great grandchildren remember about you? I want them to remember me as a person that instilled in people the courage and the confidence to become the best version of themselves and to go after the biggest, most audacious dreams that they ever could possibly imagine. Mm, that's fantastic. Kelly, thank you for making the time. Thank you for being here today. Really enjoyed it. All right. Awesome being here. Everyone, we will see you again next time. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you. Have a fantastic day.